Hey guys, welcome back to the Joe Jaguar Show, your best friend in science, astronomy, and telescopes. Now, what I have here is something that a few of you have been asking me, hey, what is that guy? So I'm gonna show it to you. This is the Vixen Super Polaris, so let's get to it. You guys have seen this video where this older mounts, the rings go on here and it's not Vixen compatible. So you see me make this out of plywood, bolt it on and then put this Vixen uh, plate on. So you have seen it, but I didn't really show too much what that mount is. But let's take a look. So I upgraded it with the two inch steel legs, not the inch and a half or inch and three quarters. Has a tray, uh, the counterweight, it, it depends what I put on here. I could have one or two or whatever. This is where your illuminated scope goes in here. Uh, I believe this is where I had like a pen type of thing where you, you illuminate it. That part is missing, but I don't think it's a big deal. You could probably just put a small flashlight in there, but I don't think it's necessary. Um, and there is the polar scope. And there's your polar adjuster. What's different on here is that this thing, a lot of times on the Cinta type, is over here. So this one is actually on the bottom. And this one's normal, they're normally up there. And uh, there's a quick look all the way around. Also, this is your uh, latitude adjuster, and then this is your locking nut. So it's slightly different, but mostly the same. And then there is the nameplate, and there you go. Okay, so the 8-inch that I got, the Celestron 8-inch that I took to Mexico as my now new travel, airplane travel telescope, when I bought that, it came on, you know, this guy. Of course, it wasn't a Vixen compatible type of thing. So I bought it, and I didn't even really know what this was in the ad he showed a couple pictures it's just called a polaris i think uh and this one's the super polaris and then they got the great polaris but so i thought it was just the polaris which is okay kind of like a cg4 eq4 type and this one would be more like a eq5 type so when when i got it and then i researched it it's like wow it's a super polaris which is good now I don't know exactly how old it is, but you know, I believe, you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, they stopped making these uh, a while ago. So for its age, it's super smooth. And I was almost crazy, and here's why. Now, you guys saw that other video that I did, how to convert an equatorial mount into an AZ mount, which wasn't that long ago. And that was a, I don't remember if it's a Skywatcher uh, or a Celestron EQ5, but it's one of those Cinta, you know, uh, clones EQ5. That is the mount that I used on that video. So I was actually going to sell this one and I listed it for like 300 Canadian. So American and UK, it's, you know, you guys can um, calculate the difference if you like there. And I really, got, I got a couple offers, but they were like low ball offers. Now, I would think for something of this quality, even though it's a manual mount, I'd gone like that or people would have realized it, but maybe because it's older, no one wants manual mounts, maybe except for me. Um, any of you other guys out there that like manual mounts with just slow motion controls, I don't mind ones that have the clock drive in either the single or the duo. That's okay, but I just don't need go-to. Most instances, I can just plop it down, put a telescope, and I know how to find the Ring Nebula, the Andromeda Galaxy, the, the Dumbbell Nebula, the Codehan Cluster, the M11, you know, all those things. Like if you have a, a Telrad, Rigel, and you're knowledgeable in the sky, it's it doesn't take that long. Now, maybe, you know, the new generation, they just like go to. So really too, once you polar a line, you know, you're, it's only moving on one axis. So it's really, 
not a big deal to, let's say, even at a planet at high power, you put it all the way out to the edge of the field of view and then just let it drift. And then again, you're just moving one control. It's, it's no big deal. But uh, anyway, I um, was going to sell it for like 300. I didn't really get any good offers or full ask offers, a couple low ball ones. And then I thought, you know, am I crazy? Keep this guy and sell the EQ5 clone, Celestron or Skywatcher EQ5 clone, and keep this guy. Because after using it a couple times, it is smooth still. It is silky smooth on both axes. And that's why I thought like, man, am I glad I didn't do that. It's just, it's built really good quality. Now on that one there, the clone, the, the gears I think sometimes start to stick a little. And I know I lubed them with lithium grease, but you know what I mean? That's, I've noticed and I've used, well, throughout the years, I've used a, quite a few that they're kind of starting to get a little friction. They're starting to bind a little bit, not totally seize up, but you can see they're already gonna start to bind in, in, in a while and they're not so smooth anymore, especially the few that I had were between like 12 to 15 years and longer. So this guy, I'm, again, don't know how old it is, but it's just so smooth. It is rock solid and there's no play. Sometimes with an EQ4, EQ5, if you move this part over here or on the counterweight, you can see there's like an eighth of a uh, movement, sometimes a quarter inch of a movement. And this guy is just nothing. So I decided to keep this guy. And then as you know, maybe you guys didn't realize when I did the video of converting the top because you know, the putting the rings onto this flat plate here is the old style. So, you know, I showed you guys that. So this is what I got. Now it did come with wooden legs. I traded those wooden legs on the CG5 clone, sold that off and kept these steel legs. Now, same thing is happening with these steel legs where it's kind of, it's not so smooth anymore. Sometimes you, on one of the legs, you really have to pull it. So uh, I think it's the inside is starting to rust a little. I think I got to address that one of these, I don't know exactly when, one of these days, but that's what it is. So a Vixen Super Polaris. It is so smooth, there is zero backlash and zero play, no matter how I do it. So I'm glad I decided to keep this one and sell that off. Oh, another thing I didn't like about the legs that came with this, not that I didn't like it, but it's, you know, the, the wooden legs. And to make it go up and down, there, there was two nuts and bolts. So you have to take each one out, raise it, and then Put the nuts and bolts back then tighten them down then to the next leg take both out raise it then so every time you raise it or lower it oh, that's a lot of work so i don't like that kind of feature you know you have your traditional locking nut you just loosen it up and down and there you go anyway so that's really it so that's what this is uh, hopefully you guys like it if you ever have a chance to use one way better then the Cinta, the Mead had the LX70, the LXD55, 75. Uh, I kind of like those. The 75, I think, is better than the EQ5, CG5 clone, a little bit better. Um, the LX70 is, I think, an exact copy of the clone, but the LXD75 was a bit better. It was It was done a little different. So that one, I think, is a little bit better. But this one ultra smooth, really like it. So that's what that is. So hopefully if you guys have watched the videos, you caught it, a few of you have asked, so I figure, okay, I'm gonna do it. And that's what this is. Anyway, guys, that's it for now. Like, comment, and subscribe. If you, hey, Joey. Um, if you know anybody getting in the hobby, share my channel with them. If you're on the forums and maybe somebody's asked about uh, you know, a mount or any other video that I've done, please share my channel with them. And I do have members video, put it up there. And it's only 99 cents a month. You get one video that does not go on the public part. 
Uh, it's only for the members. I uh, have it as cheap as possible. It helps the channel grow. That's it. Why not you? Why not me?